alaikum everyone and welcome back to the channel how are you all how is your ramzan going so far we have officially finished the first ashra of ramzan alhamdulillah may allah give us all the opportunity to make the most out of this blessed month and may he accept all of our ibadats and duas please remember our muslim brothers and sisters who are suffering right now in your duas as well so let's get started with today's video Today I'll be sharing how I planned an iftar party for my parents ahead of time. It'll include the full recipes of all of these yummy items. In the next video, you will see how this all came together, my table setup, as well as my island decoration. Um, here, I'll show you guys a little glimpse of the iftar, and that's how it looked. But stay tuned for part two to see all of the details. So let's get started with the prep. The thing I made was aloo samosas. For that, I took about six to seven medium-sized potatoes and cut it into smaller cubes and boiled it. Then I started on my filling. So to two tablespoons of oil i added a small onion chopped and cooked it until it was translucent you don't want to brown it too much did one green chili chopped along with one teaspoon of or one tablespoon of ginger garlic paste um, and then you just fry it for a little bit afterwards you add your spices so with the salt and the red chili level you can adjust that to your preference i actually ended up adding a bit more red chili at the end because i didn't think it was spicy enough um, but yeah i will add the detailed recipes in the description bar below so check that out if you would guys would like like the written recipes um so it was actually my first time making samosas completely from scratch i have made them in the past with the ready-made cheese before but not with like homemade dough so that was a first for me and alhamdulillah alhamdulillah they came out so yummy everybody loved it in the iftar so this recipe is a definite must try you guys have to try it i'm sure you will impress all of your guests to fry your spices for five to seven minutes and then you add your boiled potato and mix it well so you want the masala to be nicely incorporated into your potatoes you don't want to completely mash your potatoes leave some chunks here and there um, but yeah once you mix it well you can then add a handful of chopped cilantro and set that aside to cool while we prepare the samosa dough Dough for the samosas is actually quite simple. It only needs a few ingredients. So you need about two and a half cups of maida. So this is not regular flour. I'm talking about the refined flour, which is called maida. Um, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of edge wine, and some ghee. So I used ghee for this recipe and you really want to, you know, like rub it all together. So the way I'm going to show you guys right here, I poured a little bit of ghee and then I'm just mixing it really, really well because you want to see like crumbs forming throughout the flour. So this is really important important to get that crunchy outside um, of the samosa Make sure you don't miss this step of kneading the dough because this is the key to getting a really really nice samosa outer layer crispy layer um, afterwards i added a little bit of water to basically combine the flour to make a tight dough and then i wrapped it with plastic wrap and set it aside for about 20 to 30 minutes to rest um, so again this shouldn't be a sticky or a soft dough it should be firm like the way i'm showing you guys here it shouldn't be be soft very soft at all divided the dough into nine small balls to make medium-sized samosas so you can divide the dough depending on how big or small you want your samosas i then rolled them and i made these sheets here you can see the thickness of the sheets and then i cut the sheets in half and our individual samosa sheets are ready so i made about 18 medium samosas from this recipe if you need a bigger batch then just make sure to double the recipe to your liking um, then afterwards once my filling had cooled down i started making my samosas you fold it just like how i'm showing you here it's actually pretty simple it's not very you know difficult to make, get the shape right initially i had tried to close the samosas with a little bit of water and i basically filled it up with the filling and then i closed it with water again but i felt that it wasn't working very well so then i made a paste of flour and water and that is what i used to seal my samosas as you guys can see here Ramadan, Ramadan. I made koftas to freeze as I was planning to make kofta curry for the iftar party. I just want to add that our iftar party was planned for the first weekend in Ramzan. So I did a lot of this prep before Ramzan when I could taste test everything. So you can also prepare these things in the evening after you break your fast. That way you can check and taste the salt and the spices before your, you know, batch making. Um, so yeah, the kofta recipe is quite simple and straightforward. To my chopper, I added onion, cilantro, and green chilies and I crushed it. And then after that, I added 
had in my quema. So make sure to use a uh, quema that has 25% fat because that does enhance, you know, how well the quema, you know, the koftas bind together and it also enhances the taste. Um, once that was blended, I transferred to a big bowl and I added all of my spices and you basically then make your koftas to freeze. It's that simple, you guys. Freezing ahead of time makes it so much faster to make the curry at that time, especially while you're fasting. You just have to make a simple curry and add your koftas right in. You don't have to worry about, you know, making the kofta um, mixture at that time. So added one egg, which acts as the binding agent and it combines everything really nicely together. And then um, to make my koftas, I basically take a tray and I wrap it with plastic wrap. So I do this because it makes it easier for me to remove the koftas once they're frozen from the tray. Um, and then, yeah, you basically make your koftas whichever size you like and you place them on the tray. Once you form one layer, you put another layer of plastic wrap and you can put another layer of koftas on top and then you put it in your freezer to freeze. Next are my super simple and beginner friendly chicken spring rolls recipe. So this recipe is foolproof and I'm sure anyone can make it. It really can get any easier than this. It only needs a few ingredients and I'm sure you guys will impress all your guests with it. So to two tablespoons of oil, you add about two and a half or three pounds of chicken quema and fry it for two to three minutes until the color changes. Once that happens, then you add two tablespoons of ginger garlic paste and you mix that really well. Then you want to add your masala. So so I use um, the kashi kebab masala from Shah. I added about half of the packet along with one teaspoon of salt. You can adjust the salt to your preference. I also added half a teaspoon of black pepper and that's all. So at this point, there is a lot of liquid or water in the kima which you want to dry. So if you have a lot of liquid, your spring rolls are going to be soggy and runny. So make sure to dry it as much as possible. Once that's done, you want to set it aside and cool. So I actually was tired that day. So I made the kima mixture at night and I put it it in the fridge this is the next day where i added the fresh ingredients so you basically take one medium-sized onion chopped very small and a handful of cilantro chopped you can also add green chilies as well but i kept it mild as my kids eat these as well so then once that's mixed nicely you want to make your rolls sheets uh one tip that i would give you is that i like to keep a damp t paper towel or like a damp cloth on top of the sheets and that way they don't dry out and they don't become hard so make sure that whenever you're using like a, you know samosa sheets or you know spring roll sheets like this you want to keep them covered by a damp cloth or a paper towel at all times because they do dry out really fast um and here i'm just showing you guys how i wrap mine so i basically fold one corner and then i fold both of the sides over on top and then you just roll it all the way to the end and i like to use um uh, egg and that's basically what i use to bind or close the spring roll and there you have it that is a spring roll technique <laughs>
recipe will make you a lot of spring rolls mashallah so i made a lot of packs of them and i made sure to label like the amount that i have in each pack and that way it's easier on the day of um just to know like grab one pack and that's all you need or how many is in each pack you grab accordingly um i also made these packs so that i can use them for our daily iftars as well um and then it was time to take out the koftas they had frozen and basically i packed them in ziploc bags like this and again labeled them and they are ready to go back into the freezer and then use when you're ready to make your curry so my last recipe is going to be these yummy and delicious chicken box patties um this was the star of the iftar everyone loved this so much i think this was the one item that every single person was telling me this is the best item in the menu so this is the best thing that i kept for the end for the last um you guys have to try this recipe out i am sure it will not disappoint here i'm using a mixture of chicken boneless thigh pieces and chicken breast pieces cut into small cubes so you can use chicken thigh pieces uh, by itself it will be great i don't recommend using chicken breast because it will be on the drier side um, once you've cut that into small cubes you want to add all of your spices i did use the tandoori um, ready-made masala from sean as well just one tablespoon and i added yogurt and a few teaspoons of olive oil you want to mix that really nicely so that it's incorporated you can marinate it for an hour or overnight it's your preference i marinated for one hour and then i added to my pan on high heat i did not add any additional oil you fry it for about five to eight minutes on high heat and then you lower the heat and cover with the lid so you let that cook for about 10 minutes on medium heat at this point your chicken will have released the liquid and now it's time for my secret ingredient which is basically two tablespoons of cornstarch so this helps to thicken up that liquid and makes your chicken filling nice and creamy so once you get a creamy texture like this you want to turn off the heat and you want to let that cool down so once it's cooled i added one small green bell pepper chopped finely and one jalapeno chopped finely along with two to three tablespoons of mayo and you mix that all together and you have your delicious chicken filling for your box patties now it's time to make the actual box patties so for that i took the large um, spring roll sheets that i had and i basically divided them into three equal long strips like this and then i would take two strips at a time and i would form this cross uh, shape i used an egg which i beat and that is my um, binding agent or my sealant and that's basically what i use to combine the sheets together just follow the steps that i'm doing here to add a good amount of chicken filling in the center and then uh, one by one you want to fold each of the sides of the spring roll sheets up in between we i basically brushed it with the egg coating and then i would fold each side of the spring roll sheet so just as you guys can see here i brush it with the egg wash and then i fold again i'll brush it with the egg wash and then i will fold the other side on top and this way it helps it to be crispy as well as completely sealed from all sides there you have it these are your crispy chicken box patties and these are absolutely delicious and i highly recommend making these for iftar so you could stop there and leave them as is or you can do one additional step just like me i basically coated each patty in the egg wash and then i would coat it in a layer of breadcrumbs it really helps to give it a really nice look from the outside especially when you fry them it looks really pretty um but yeah i actually had two types of breadcrumbs and that's why you'll notice a difference in the color of the breadcrumbs pack these the same way that i packed everything else Else, I made little packets in Ziploc bags and labeled them with the quantities and basically those are all the recipes that I made for the iftar that I planned for my parents. Um, inshallah in the next video I will show you guys how I prepared all of these, how I you know fried everything and how I set up my table decoration along with my island decoration and how the iftar went. I hope you guys found this video helpful and useful for your future iftar parties if you're having any and um, make Make sure to stay tuned for part two where I share all the decoration details. So until then, take care of yourselves and Allah Hafiz.